stability. It keeps the dolphin upright, even when they swim fast. And finally, the muscular section of the tail, right by the flukes, that is the peduncle. It provides the power stroke for some really important things. Forward movement, ooh, a tail lock. Working on that peduncle strength, Epo. Uh, the peduncle <laughs> gives them the ability to jump. The peduncle gives them the ability to splash. So I want to take a moment and focus in on one of those very important skills. I want to talk about how dolphin and human jumping are different for this part. I could use the help of a human volunteer. Is there someone here in the audience that did not help at the trivia, is very good at jumping, and is politely sitting with their hand raised to make it easy for me to find you? This is really tough. I just need one helper for a couple of seconds. Uh, are you two sisters? Do you want to come together and help me out? It's hard to choose just one of you. You're both sitting so politely. Hello, friends. What are your names? Mar Mariah? And what's your name? Mary, yeah. nice to meet you both. Come on over here next to my ruler. So I'll have one of you on this side of the ruler and one of you on this side. Awesome. I'll wave at the audience so we can spot like you. So in just a moment, I'm going to have the audience help me count down. Audience, let's count down from three, and then we'll all yell, jump together. When you hear jump, I want you to jump the highest jump you've ever jumped. We're going to compare your jump with the dolphins. Ready? All right, audience, help me count down from three, two, one, jump. Super. That was really amazing. You were both almost at a foot. I am very impressed. High fives. Thank you so much for your help. You can go back to your seat. I am a big round of applause. Very good, from a standstill. Okay, so right now at the Olympics, where they get a running start, uh, the record is just over eight feet. Humans, we've only crossed that eight foot jumping barrier once, back in 1993. Okay, so dolphins, they jump really high on a regular basis. Let's get a look at a dolphin jump in action. Makoa, can you beat eight feet? Wow. <laughs> that was beautiful, Makoa. Let's get a measurement on dolphins' jumps, please. So the Pacific right-sided dolphins wrapped around the water is 20 feet in the air. Yeah, very impressive. Pacific right-sided dolphins are famous for those acrobatic skills. Let's take a moment and appreciate the dolphins' impressive aerials. Red-tailed hawk. 
just like Shasta here. Now, we'd like to ask Shasta to exercise and fly in front of us today. I have to remind everyone, please stay sitting in your seats. If you need everyone to take their seats at this time for animal safety, please double check that your flash is off on your cameras and phones. A beautiful flight. Thank you, Shasta. Let's all wave goodbye to Shasta and her trainers. Hey, I just have to repeat this for animal safety. Please stay sitting in your seats, especially in the front. Cruz is a very special rescue animal. He was recovered in 2012 in Southern California, and his rescuers determined he is completely blind. We use sound cues to allow us to train him, and that is why trainer Mina has a red rattle on a stick to guide him around. Clearly, this young sea lion doesn't let anything slow him down. Okay, so you probably guessed this from the name. California sea lions are from the west coast of North America, highlighted up on the screen. California sea lions are truly dynamic animals, folk. They live on the land and in the water. Let's talk about how they do this. Look at those powerful front flippers. They allow him to cool off on a hot day and also to soar through the water at speeds of over 25 miles per hour. Watch for his rear flippers and how flexible they are. <laughs> they are the ones that allow him to steer through the water and also to walk and run on land. He has a great appetite. Sea lion teeth are perfect for grabbing, catching, and tearing up to 35 pounds of seafood a day. If you're watching closely, this follows almost all of his food whole. Sea lions do sometimes get mixed up with another cool marine mammal, seals. Seals and sea lions are separate species, and one way that you can tell them apart is to look for a sea lion external ear flaps. Check it out. Okay, so because of those ears, sea lions have really good hearing. Let's run a quick experiment and compare our hearing with crews on land. In just a moment, we will play some special sounds and flashing lights. If you think the sounds and lights are on your right side, raise your right hand. If you think it's on your left, raise your left. Let's see how we compare. First sound, please.
and that's totally fine. Even if you're messing up, go ahead and make a phone to might just ask for that behavior another time. You might move on to a different one. But then you just let the student go hang out in a different part of their habitat and try again for a different training session. If you want this to be as positive an experience as possible, so there's nothing ever wrong. The skill is just having one of those days that don't feel like that. Of course, we do encourage them to participate because it is a great way for us to make sure they're as healthy as they can be. We get every single behavior you see to make is meant to help our new people go about that. Even if you see the still just moving around on the rocks, you look pretty silly, get a nice little layer of blubber so they jiggle around a little bit. Because moving up on the rocks is a great way for us to check on those skills mobility. Now, if you do see something that looks like it's just getting the seal, like we're seeing one of our other seals in the center of the rock right now, that is actually a great chance for us to just check up on that health of the seal skin to make sure there's no cuts or abrasions on them. I think earlier I saw one of our people throw a target pole at a seal retreated. It is not just a simple game of fetch, but it's a great chance for us to make sure the seal is moving it down into water, make sure the eyesight is as good as it can be. These training sessions are just a great way for us to care for our students' physical health, but also a great way for us to care for our students' mental health as well. Here at the community, we do something called enrichment. Every single animal, kind of a big word, but it just means providing any mental or physical simulation, changing up their day. So as we are participating in this habitat, moving them around to the school in different ways, having them remember different behaviors and learn new ones, is a really great way to their minds active. <laughs> there is something else that we'd like to talk about during these training sessions, and it is the relationship between our seals and our zookeepers. You might notice that both seals and zookeepers look very comfortable, even like they've been doing this time and time again, but because they have. We do these training sessions twice a day, every single day. It's the middle of summer, bright and sunny out. There's hundreds of people in the zoo, up to 50 up on these rocks. We're both the seals. If it's the middle of winter, it's zero degrees out, it's snowing, and there's not a single guest in the zoo, but people will also be up on these rocks working on the other zoo. It's such an important way for us to care for their own health. Another great way for this is allowing us to do is building that relationship, allows our people to know if there is something maybe a little bit wrong with the zoo. Unlike us humans, we get to the problem with our hand, maybe, we can just walk up to the dog and then let that dog know that our hand is feeling a little bit weird. So just can't do that. Pulling the keepers, something might be a little wrong, and instead have to do the go keepers instead. So by our keepers working with them all the time, understanding exactly what the skills are normally, a little bit off, might just let our keepers know that you have to call that game for a wet game. These training sessions are a great way to practice for the best go vet visit as well. I don't know about you, but I know I don't want any surprises if I were to go to the doctor's office. I don't want our students to have that as well. We can practice different behaviors during these training sessions so that whatever a vet visit can do, it's going to be as easy as possible for both the vet and the seals. And sometimes you might see our students walking inside that red building. It's a great way to practice stepping on a scale. We can keep them trying to show them a flipper in case they need an injection. Looks like we have wrapped up our training session. Our people do amazing work every single day to make sure. Yeah.